Okay, hi guys, Matt Rhodes here, and I'm very, very pleased to say today I'm joined by JF Karom. JF, usually I ask, how are you? But in your situation, I'm scared to ask, but um, nice yeah, to see but you. No, anyway. uh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm also, of course, uh, very happy to go back home last week. It was the most important for me, you know, it was uh, not simple to send me back home. Uh, but uh, of course, I arrive on Wednesday. It was a long, long time in hospital in Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, if we just talk about what led up to this terrible injury, it all began with the Arnold Strongman Classic was announced, and you were given an invitation. Um, the big news about the Arnolds was that there would be max squat, something we'd never seen before. Uh, also, that for the first time, guys could use a suit and wraps, which was something, again, we're not used to at the Arnolds. And I know that struck fear into many of the athletes who just weren't used to it. But I think for you, this was good news, yeah? Yeah, it was really good news. <laughs> it was really good news. You know, I have a very good background in powerlifting. In the old time when we lift equipped single ply, then uh, for me it was uh, very easy to to uh, restart the training for that you know it was also very fun i was very comfortable with that type of lift and uh, uh, i'm not surprised by the result because i i know the guy will be conservative you know nobody want to risk because it's a uh, new events and n nobody try it and uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that the guy don't push too much uh, on the weight, but I, I was ready for much more. How much were you ready for? 1,050. 1,050? Yeah. Oh. I, I was thinking many guys can do 1,000 pounds, I think. I think Liches have 1,000 pounds in him. Rob Kearney, Bobby Thompson. It's just because maybe... We need just one training with the equipment before, you know, it can change. But if we put this event in a few years again, the weight will be increased a lot. It's, it's what I think, because now you know uh, what you're capable of, because, you know, the, the double T bar with this round shape uh, make the event easier because you have no rolling at the bar. Mm -hmm. Also, you can use a little bit the bounce of the of the crusher pads each side it helped you a lot again. Then for me, it was it was just uh, very easy. I think I can do without suits, no problem. Yeah, because you in the end did 966, yeah? 438, yep. and it looked easy. It felt easy, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it feel, feel easy. I was very comfortable. You know, at 950, I feel I have 100 pounds more, and I just put what I need to one. Mm -hmm. uh, no points to, to push more. They don't offer extra money or something to put a thousand or something sometimes it happened and i don't know i remember oh me they asked to to tour example to try bigger weight for extra money yeah but uh nothing happened and oh, i just put the weight i need to won the event it was the most important uh, for me yeah. uh, but uh in final i think the the fans and the, the crowd watching the events uh, like it is the most important mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it seemed like a kind of mixed reaction. Um, perhaps it's difficult for spectators there to see what's going on. I know one thing was that it takes quite a long time for the guys to get wrapped, their knees wrapped. So it went quite slow like that. Maybe they could have got wrapped while the athlete before was going, just to speed it up, perhaps. Yeah, it's a good idea. But, you know, with, the problem is the rising bar system. With a rising bar system, example, if somebody lift and choose another weight, oh, the order change again. Yeah, you don't know who's going to go. That's the problem. If you do like powerlifting style, you can go a lot faster. Uh -huh. And it's, it's also better for the warm up because I wait over an hour after my last warm up, you know, because, okay, you go in four athletes, but I know uh, maybe not, maybe the, the guys will not push, put enough weight and I will wait and wait and wait. It, uh, it's what will happen. Yeah. And I wait a long, long time before going. But for me, it's changed almost nothing, you know, because I know it will be a very comfortable lift. Mm -hmm. And um, 
there was a lot of debate about how the guys were using knee wraps, which way they should wrap them. Do you have a certain technique that you believe is the right way? Well, I, I always use the same technique. You know, in past, I wrap myself by myself, but uh, it's a lot tighter when someone who knows how to put the straps. Example, I was there with Simon and Frederic. Mm -hmm. They are very good to wrap the knees, you know. And I see many guys put the knee wraps wrong, you know. The many, many guys was not wrapped correctly. And, you know, knee wraps can help a lot. You know, uh, at my last attempt, I said to Simon, okay, put maximum just for fun. And I'll feel almost nothing in the lift. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, yes, you have many techniques. The, the two best technique is, okay, you start from the bottom to up and you really, really uh, tight knee wraps mm -hmm. or also in cross position and you finish with a buckle. It's also a good technique. But uh, the most important is put like a liquid grip on the knees and the, the, the knee wrap not slipped on the skin okay. is the, the, the most important. But, you know, at, at the end, it's changed nothing for, for me because I don't need very tight knee wrap and very tight suit and very tight stuff to lift that weight. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, if everybody uh, learn from that, mm -hmm. Because I expect maybe they will put my squat in World Strongest Man. Because, you know, all the athletes are, not all, but the best athletes are prepared already for my squat. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a, a little part of the, the, the problem of the max squat, I think many guys are afraid about this event. Yeah. But I know also World Strongest Men are interested about putting this event back. It's why I think will maybe happen in final this year. And now everybody tests it in, the, in Arnold Classic that it's maybe the, the best time to put a, mm -hmm. this event in front. Uh, but uh, if you put with Axel, Axel Bar, oh, it will be much harder. <laughs> yeah, because it's more difficult with shoulder mobility, yeah, if the bar is... Yeah, but the bar is very wide. You, you, you can take it wide. Yeah. The problem is the rolling. Okay. And if you try, but for me, it's changed nothing because I squat high bar position. Mm -hmm. My back is very straight. Then I have no problem with that. But if you bend a lot from the front, oof, it's a big, big, big difference. And you can, uh, you can lose the weight, you know, uh, in your neck easily with the, the axle. Then the technique is very important. But uh, I will be not there this year. Then maybe uh, it's better if you wait few 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 years more <laughs> <laughs> well now all the athletes will hear you say you think it's a world's strongest man i guarantee they'll all be running in the gym to <laughs> train yeah. squat, squat tomorrow yeah <laughs> and in your training for squat how heavy did you go up to oh i stopped at 800 uh 900 sorry 900 yeah okay. it was the biggest weight i put in my training but i do a lot of reps during many weeks i squat two times like one times with suit just to remember you know old technique and how i can do and the other training was like five set of five and i increased the weight each uh, each week with uh, only knee reps okay uh, but my squat was very very strong my, on the last week i squat for five reps 775 just with knee reps no belt yeah. then i really think uh, i can squat uh, 100 pounds more than i did in arnold classic and uh, the, the feeling was like that, you know. Uh, then I squat two times a week, but it was not a big difference than my normal training. You know, I not just focus on squat. I do deadlift also before. Yeah. I'm not less, you know. Then uh, I squat each week, maybe one or two times, but sometimes it's different movement. Like example, safety bar squat or mm -hmm. front squat or camber bar squat. I, I I did it since 20 years. I never stopped. Then uh, I think it's why, you know, you take, you need time to build this uh, squat and deadlift power. But the good news, I was really strong in deadlift too in, uh, in the Arnold. Because when you squat going up, I think maybe, maybe few guys don't do any deadlift because they just focus on squat. But uh, the, the transfer to the deadlift is excellent.
Yeah. I'm sure everybody is also very strong in the diff right now. Then uh, I think we, we can see big number uh, in World Strongest Men. Because sure. I was going to ask you that about accessories to improve your squat. So you talked about deadlift and leg press or anything else that you use? Yeah, Le leg press is a very good uh, exercise to build uh, leg power. And it's also very similar to deadlift. Uh, I remember Eddie Owl is a big fan of leg press. You know, we do a lot of leg press and training and yeah. the deadlift was very good, you know. And I do a lot of leg press too. And I think the transfer is very good to, to, to deadlift. And I like like big set of leg press. Example, I do like giant set, example, mini set of 20 okay. until, uh, until I cannot put more weight on the, on the leg press. I put bands also. Uh, but at the end, sometimes I do like set of 80, 100 repetition, oh, you really? know, dropping the weights. And continue and push, 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 push because you know we, you have big capacity to push that weight, and the feeling is similar to a truck pull. You know you have the same burning in legs, mm -hmm. and that's why I use a lot. But uh, I think it's very good accessories. But you know I think the trick is you have many good accessories for legs, uh, but if you want to prepare for strongman competition, the most important is intensity. Okay, you know. Mm -hmm. So if, I, I know a few guys don't have any leg press, but you have to push hard, you know, to feel this this burn burning mm -hmm. in the legs is the the most important. And a few guys have it's not working. That's the most important is when the leg training is finished, the tank is supposed to be empty. Yeah, and uh, I guess. It kind of went as people expected. Martins and Rob Kearney were the other guys doing very big squats. That's what you expected? Oh, yes. Yes, I know. Because uh, I was sure Bobby is very strong. Martins is capable of 1,000 pounds. I think he's a very good squatter. Maybe not in the best shape for squat because he have some kind of back issues, mm -hmm. back injury before Arnold Classic. But still, he's always strong in that kind of movement. Uh, I trained with Rob also in Brazil, and I saw he's very strong in squat. Yeah. And he have, you know, he's a short guy. He has good leverage, you mm -hmm. know, to the yeah, type yeah. of, uh, and he walk with a power lifter coach. Then I know it will be dangerous, but uh, it was, you know, where Rob came second in that event. He, uh, I think he have place for more weight. But uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I, I, re I was thinking maybe the guy will try to push more like 1,000 pounds and I need to fight over 1,000. Yeah. And then going into event two, the monster dumbbell, four reps. But it was a huge problem. Four of the athletes zeroed. One athlete got one rep. So between five of the guys, just one rep. What's the problem with that? Is it just the thickness of the thing, the awkwardness? Because it's very unusual to see the best guys in the world, so many zeroing. What do you find the main problem about that event? I don't know why. For me, I'm not surprised because I get I get injured in rogue invitation all in my in my shoulder, and I almost not train dumbbell, you know. But normally, dumbbell is is my best overhead event. Then, in normal case, I can do the dumbbell if I'm not injured. Don't worry, but. I was thinking the result will be higher because, in my opinion, a giant dumbbell mm -hmm. like this is easier than the sear dumbbell. But uh, I was surprised to see many guys miss the the the, the dumbbell. I was thinking I would maybe the the only athlete to miss, mm -hmm. but finally four of them <laughs> missed the the weight. But for the points, it was good, you know, because it, I know. Uh, the point system is special in Arnold Classic, and nobody got zero, never. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you talk about uh, about that uh, this year on the social media, but it was also shit in, in the past years. You know, I remember 2018, I'm supposed to came third, and uh, Shivlakov beat me and Mateus because many guys do zero in Axel. You know, yeah. it was the same situation. Yeah. yeah. Very frustrating, you know, when the guy don't, Still, you don't clean the, the axle and get 2.5 okay. points. 
And so what's your opinion? Thing. If somebody zeros, they should get zero or they should get zero. one? Zero means zero, yeah? Yeah, you don't lift. Mm -hmm. zero. Mm. zero. It's my opinion. Normal, in, in all other strongman contests, it's zero is zero. Yeah. Just in that one, the special rules. They, it's because they put that rules in past. Because in that time, in Arnold Classic, they put, you know, like incredible weight you know they want to try something they never tried it before mm -hmm. then they decide to don't give any zero to the athletes because they have the the the, the courage to to try. to try it okay it's why it's in the rules right now again but in my opinion it's not a good uh, point system mm -hmm. i think it's better to do okay you did zero it's zero uh you did one rep okay you get some points uh, it, it's better like this because now you have few athletes missing you got two 2.5 maybe three points for zero at the end it's big difference and sometimes example luke stockman came last in squat but still he lift 800 i don't remember how much and he got just one point it, yeah. it's why then zero is supposed to be easier yeah and the guys who zeroed on the stone to shoulder got three points. Yes, also I was disappointed Trench. about this uh, this uh, event, but uh, I think the biggest mistake they made with that stone, they allowed towel tech. After three years of uh, competing with that stone, now the stone is very very slippery because you know all this natural grip on the stone now is full of this okay. tacky okay. it will be better in past to just allow chalk and uh, the stone i think must be easier to lift at mm. least on the lap if you cannot lap it it's, yeah. it's uh, very hard i lived that stone in past and it was very slippery and i think in 2019 a few guys tried to cheat and put sp spray tacky also and now I don't I don't say any name, but I think everybody knows who <laughs> do that. Uh, anyway, but now it's much harder to lift, you know. Then I think chalk is a better uh, better issue with that stone because it's sad to see very good stone lifter miss the lap and can do nothing with the stone because the grip was wasn't so good on the on the stones, you know. It's uh, and also when it's happening, I think you have 30 seconds to lap the stone or something like this. I see many guys like Tom, uh, Maxim, like the, the guy like panicking. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. Just miss the event. And they are really good stone lifter. Yeah. Then it was a little bit uh, disappointing to, to watch because I think with a good grip, if, if you have time and no rush to just, okay, takes five seconds stop not panicking place your hands correctly and start to lift and they can do many reps i think and there was a lot of very inexperienced first time guys at the arnold's this year yes yes it's a big difference but uh, you know in the order of view i'm not surprised it happened you know yeah. because i lived that stone in the past and it, it's not easy yeah so after those two events how are you feeling overall you were feeling okay going yeah, into yeah. Really good, you know. And when we start the log in the morning, I was uh, really surprised by the feeling. I uh, was, uh, I was sure I will lift 420. Okay, I know I my shoulder is not in the best shape, and I have no chance to lift uh, 200 kilo. You know, 200 mm -hmm. kilo will be a PR for me. Yeah. Then maybe in World Strongest Man, but not in Arnold. Then I go conservative, open at 380. I did 400, quite easy much easier than training then okay i think i think i can do 420 no problem but uh, accident uh, hurts i was disappointed to watch the rest of the contest at the hospital you know <laughs> i know i trained the frame uh, really hard this year yeah. uh, because i know i have a good chance to came top three in that event mm -hmm. in stones also but you know uh, sport is sport yeah about the injury can you just tell us exactly what did happen yeah, Dr. Todd uh, looked the video in, in slow motion. Mm -hmm. What he saw, he saw my left foot slip like one inches, two inches. Okay. And just the slip movement, like 
came in a chain movement and all broke. The, the, the left one broke and half second after, you know, the, the, the weight transfer on the right leg and broke also. Then it was like two baseball bat clacking, clack, clack. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, when it happened, I was exactly sure what, what happened to me, you know, no doubt. And when the log hit you, did that no. cause any further injury or no? No, no, it changed nothing. I just uh, strain my ankle when I fall, okay. you know, because you, your leg can respond. Then yeah. I fall on my ankle and I, the ankle like turn like this. Uh, but I, when I arrive at the hospital, they make me uh, more fear, you know, about injury because they said, okay, we think your left knee is totally destroyed, you know, mm. not just the main tendon. And uh, also my ankle was that big. And he said, oh, it's me, the ankle is broke too. But they don't take any x-ray or something. They just anyway, will, Yeah, yeah, just guess. It's a, anyway, we will open that on the table and we fix it. Mm. Okay. And uh, when I wake up from, uh, from surgery on the, on the next day, they said, finally, just your quad tendons, both is uh, ruptured. Then uh, it was much better when they said, and it, oh, we also check your your ankle on the X-ray, and uh, finally it's, it's not broken. Then it was much better than when I when I thought at the at the start. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's hard, you know. You go to surgery and you, you you're not sure what will happen <laughs> with your legs. You know? yeah. When you were lying there, it may sound a silly question, but how much pain were you in? Because sometimes the adrenaline is so much at, at that moment. Yes, the adrenaline was very high, then the pain was, wasn't so bad. Mm. But when they try to move me, yeah. oh shit. It, you know, the, the left leg, I have like 10 times more pain in the left knee than okay. the right one. It's why they think also about maybe, okay, all the knees is maybe broken. Uh, and they have to, the, the paramedic give me some medicine, painkillers, mm -hmm. and they can put me in the ambulance uh, after that because it was not possible to put on my side. Mm -hmm. It was uh, too too painful. The the level of pain was uh, very high at this uh, at this moment. Mm -hmm. But after they inject me, you know, I don't remember the ambulance ride to the hospital. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, but uh, it was painful for sure. <laughs> and right now you're at home. Yeah, I'm at home. I'm in the, like hospital bed. Mm -hmm. at home. Uh, my wife helped me here uh, to for you know I can do nothing I cannot move from the bed then uh, and also a nurse coming uh, every day for help me for washing and all the all the stuff you know I have to stay three weeks in the bed before start moving my legs but uh, in three weeks I will can start to switch to wheelchair and move in the house you know I can I will go to toilet uh, normally also it will be uh, much much better than now but you know yeah, yeah what, i have to wait what's the long-term prognosis how long do you need the stages here to recover from this the doctor says one year recovery one year okay one year recovery and you can walk normally you can do what you want but maybe not <laughs> strong in competition you know but I will do many physio as possible, you know. I search the best specialist now in Canada. Also, uh, Martins uh, helped me, and they, they present me already to his uh, doctor for stem cell therapy. Okay, yeah. He said it will help me uh, a lot. Yeah. If, uh, I can get a chance to maybe compete one more time. Uh, it will help a lot. Then uh, I'm in touch with them. And in the following weeks, they, they will send me protocol or how we can proceed for the steam cell. But uh, I will try to do all is possible to, to come back. Yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talking about your role in Canada in Strongman, I know you play a very important role in promoting the sport, uh, in running competitions. What are the main competitions at the moment you're involved with in Canada? 
Okay. First, now in Canada, I organize all pro show. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest show of the year is all the time Canada's Strongest Man competition. La last year, it was the only show we did in Canada, but it was a big show. We did uh, like uh, two two day show, ten events, because we want to produce at least five episodes for the sport channel. And uh, Gabriel Réon was the champion at the end. Maxime uh, was injured in the competition. He came, uh, he finished the contest, uh, came in fourth place, mm -hmm. but he broke one finger, like, like in the middle of the contest. Mm -hmm. He was also injured in shoulder. Then it, it wasn't the, the, best, the best of Maxime uh, last year. But uh, Gabriel was really good. And it was also big why he got the World Strongest Man invitation. You know, yeah. Colin Price called me when uh, I was in hospital to talk a little bit for for uh, my case. <laughs> and I said, OK, because they want two Canadian at least. Because last year, finally, the two Canadian on, on the list was top five. Yeah. yeah. Then I think we deserve a minimum of two at least. And Maxim will be there. And I think I said, okay, Gabriel win the show last year, then he deserved to compete there. He's just 25 and he's also very good potential for the future. He, he started to, to make the switch to international. He made the shot last year, last year did well. Then I think uh, it's good opportunity from him. Then uh, this year we have five show already uh, booked for the, the, the summer, but it's just for pro athlete here. In Canada and maybe I will invite a few Americans to compete there because we have a few guys not so close to Quebec City. Example, Rob Kearney is one of them yeah. uh, at six hours driving from there and uh, they want to compete in Canada. You know, we have very big crowd here and the festival restart this year. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it will be fun to put it in place and my my biggest goal is, okay, this year it, it was not possible, but maybe bring back Warwick uh, with an international show uh, in the next year. Okay. And I wanted to ask you about competitions almost got cult status now, which is Fortissimus, which ran in 2008 and nine in Quebec. Do you have any involvement with that or could you going forwards? Because I think kind of like the hardcore strongman set would love to see that competition back and you somewhere involved in it. Yes, of course. But we were supposed to organize Fortis Immerse in 2020, but the fucking pandemic, <laughs> you know, uh, but all, all of us said, you know, we, we already got money from government for that and uh, all was fixed that it was to be uh, supposed to be in uh, September 2020. I did the, already the invitation for that. I invite all the the best athletes, but uh, a few of them uh, refuse because it was it's hard competition. You know? <laughs> because in past Fortissimus was a decathlon, then ten events, and, and yeah. if we do Fortissimus again, it will be the same. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And a few guys say, ah, oh, it's maybe a little bit too hard <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's it's 10 events, but uh, I'm sure we can have a big lineup here with uh, good uh, prize money, but uh, it's the goal, you know. I think for the future, it will be the best to do Fortissimus in Warwick because Warwick is the biggest place for storm and sport. You know, we compete there during 16 or 17 years I was there at the first one, you know. Uh, it was an amateur competition in 2004, I think. And it became Arnold Strongman, you know. Then a very big show. I think it was maybe the best place to do it because, of course, you will have a big crowd there. It's always full. Uh, I think the last year we compete in Warwick, we have like 10,000 people. Really? Each day, you know. It was very, very full. Then uh, if we have a chance to make big international somewhere, I think it would be the best spot to, to, to do it. But uh, it's, it's my goal for sure to bring back Fortissimus. You know, the first plan was to compete in Fortissimus, but maybe it was just organizing. <laughs> but uh, of course, it's one of my biggest goals, you know. And uh, the founder of Fortissimus, Paul, is a good friend to me. 
and uh, is now 84, 85 years old. Yeah. And you want to see one more time for this okay. and uh, come back with the best athlete. And we have also to push, you know, big hard events. You know, because if you remember, because if you watch on YouTube now, for this semester 2008 or 9, okay, mm -hmm. okay, it is big weight. But in that time, it was really huge. Yeah. Nonsense, you know. I remember in that time, people said, fuck, it, it, it's too heavy. It's too heavy. But with the evolution of the sport, now those weights are normal. Yeah. But we, we want to push in the same situation than 2009. Put very big weight, something like impossible to lift. That's why but, some athletes have said no to you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it was maybe too dangerous. But, you know, in the past, when you make the first time, the best athlete like Zedronas, uh, Derek Ponstone, uh, Brian Shaw, Kokleyev, nobody was afraid yeah. about big weight in that time. You know, I think the guy was, wasn't maybe not pushed like today in competition. Maybe the guy have like 10% gap. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't need to push very, very hard. But in that contest, it was a very big test of, uh, of strength. Yeah. And it was very impressive to watch. I was there. And uh, I want to reproduce the, the same thing right now. What were you doing? You were there like as a helper, yeah? You were... Yeah, I was there 2008. If you watch the show, you will see me around helping uh, Louis Philippe mm -hmm. and helping also Derek Ponstone with uh, knee wrap and stuff. Yeah. I was uh, not prepared for that, you know, in that year. But, uh, uh, you know, in 2008 is why I start to be better, but I was small. I was like 125 kilo. But in 2008, I made my first World Strongest Man appearance too. Yeah. Then it starts from there, but uh, I, re I remember the, all the athletes were was there to compete. It was a very big, very big event. I think Fortissimus changed something in in strongman sport. You know, yeah. after that, you you start to see bigger weight everywhere yeah. in all the competition. You know, because they, they push a step forward. Mm -hmm. You know, many many specialists of the sport. I've said that the weight present in Fortissimus was too heavy before the contest happened. Now it's too dangerous, too heavy. No, no, no. But the guy lifts the weight. Yeah. Then why put less now? Then they continue to improve and improve. And I think it's one of the main reasons why everybody's stronger now is because that type of event happened in the past, you know? Yeah. And uh, we, we had to do something like this in the future. And it's my goal to bring back in Canada. In Canada, we have all the time big crowd for storm and sport. I know the, the athletes like to came to Canada to compete also for that. But it will be something different for sure. Fortissimus must be different than other competition. Totally agree. Okay, well, I'll start looking at flights to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um... Yes, 2008, when Fortismus, that was your first world strongest man. Um, that was the last year that Marius won world strongest man, yes. right? Yep. So how was your experience there? What were your thoughts overall that first time? My first world strongest man. What I remember the most, it was Marius was injured in, in Calf. Okay. And I... I remember how much the people just talk about that. Talk about he will not win because injury. He will not win because he's injured in calf. He will not pull the truck pool because he's injured in calf. Then I, you know, it's the only time in my career I compete with Marius. And I don't know him very, very much, you know, and he doesn't speak any big English. And me also in that time, my English wasn't was bad. But this athlete was not like the other one. It was another kind of athlete. This athlete can, on, on, on that day, he need more. He will do more. You know, and it's why also Zidronas taught me when he talked about Marius. He said he was one of the, the hardest guys to beat. 
Because if today he need two reps, he will do two. You know, it's that type of guy. And injured or not, he will push mm -hmm. on the injury. And at the end of the day, he won the competition. Yeah. Uh, it was a very strange scenario, you know, in, in the in this uh, World Strongest Man 2008. Really, I, I, I really think Derek Ponstone was be better athlete and he made the mistakes and he don't won. Yeah. He made his chance on that year. You know, he was really, really close. But yeah. just seeing Marius fighting, you know, over this uh, small or big injury, nobody knows, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was maybe or horribly painful. But when the whistle blow, doesn't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have big respect for an athlete like this. You know, I see the sport changing during 15 years. I see so, so many guys complaining about many stuff, you know. But if you go back to 2008, World's Longest Man is a lot, lot different than now. Now we are, athlete was uh, just outside waiting okay, it's your turn to compete, you go. But now we are like kind of superstar, you know, we, we have, everybody have couch at their conditioning and stuff. And, and still a lot of guys complain. Mm -hmm. But in that time, that, that time it was different, but uh, it was very good memories for me to see uh, those athletes uh, competing and fight for 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 the win it was a good experience and i learned a lot from uh, from that uh, those athletes yeah. you talk about uh Kuklaev. he used to turn up with just a small kit bag yeah just a few bits in it yeah you know we have i see many guys bring in there almost no equipment <laughs> yeah they, they, they don't care you know it, yeah Kuklaev, when uh, misha compete for first war strong as many came to her place then it's not a question of money. It's not a question of who have the best equipment. In that time, it was you're strong or you're not. <laughs> it was it was just there. He he was also in, in Fortissimus and he performed really well there. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I think Misha was uh, one of the most impressive athletes uh, I saw in my life. Uh, also because because he have good weightlifting technique. You know, and it's not very popular. You know, in strong and not so many guys can lift like real snatch technique and real clean and uh, clean and jerk technique uh i see him lift bars like it's empty you know it's yeah. it's incredible to to watch very 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 impressive you know to to see that guy going and i think he's not super prepared for strongman you know i think you came back this guy with a good training he can want many titles <laughs> yeah i agree and then 2015 to 2021, seven consecutive years you were in the World's Strongest Man final. Yep. Um, top six finishes and five of those or six of those top five, yeah? Yep. What was your secret to not missing any of those competitions, being injury-free for those and also never even making a mistake in the heats or anything? Do you think there were certain things that you did that other guys don't that enabled you to have such consistency? Yeah, but first, you know, uh, in my training, normally I train almost all strongman events all the time in rotation. I don't just, okay, we pick up the Arnold, we train for Arnold. Okay, now it's Rogue Invitational, you, we train with Rogue. In that time, we have many contests. I compete like 20, 25 times a year. Yeah. Then we train for all. I think it's the best thing to do because still the athlete, I have no idea now what will happen in World Strongest Men. Yeah. Then the best minding is be prepared for all. And at, at the end, you can change the event in the morning, you know, then it's much better to be prepared for any situation. Mm -hmm. First thing, it's why I think my training was good for that. Also, uh, prepare your stones because you have stones all the time in qualification and stones in final. Very, very important. Yeah. And uh, also, you know, it's a different contest, you know. The World Strongest Man, I learned from my first one to, to when I, example, I made my first final 2012. 
the biggest difference with other competition, you know, if you compete in a one day show five events, sometimes you will maybe stay few few energy in few events and you you have to deal with that and yeah. but in war song as men you compete one or two events a day yeah from like 8 a.m till 8 p.m yeah yeah but okay it's very long but when it start 100 percent all the time you will have time to rest anyway mm. it's what i always do and I think the, the best trick in Warsong as men is you must to be a complete athlete. It's why I never miss finals since 2012, I think. It's because I have almost no weak points, really. You know, I always work hard on my weaknesses. Then any, any events, is, it's okay for me. You know? yeah. But for a few guys, you know, they are very specialized in, in a few stuff. It's much harder to do the to do the World Strongest Man final. But now, still, it's the stones. You know, it's all about stones. It's why I saw many guys like, talking about, oh, I will win this year, I will do this. Maybe not, you know. You must be good in stones because you may be the best athlete for the final events, but first you have to do the final. <laughs> yeah, you have to be there, yeah. You know, you must to be there. And uh, if you're not the best stone lifter, you have to win the group. And if you need to fight on stones, you know, uh, you must be prepared for that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, very important. But uh, for, for me, stone was always good, but I train stones every week during years. You know, I think it's the, I think it's the trick too. Yeah. And you've seen many different formats of group formats uh, the number of events this year, we're going to six groups. For you, what is the best format at World Strongest Man to determine who is the World Strongest Man? In my point of view, it's changed nothing. The same guy wins at the end. Okay. okay. But for TV, example, group of five is not so good because you put team events, example, in double, but one is alone. Yeah then it's not the best. I think six guys much better. And uh, also, it's always the problem. It, when you have six athletes, it was like this in the past. It's also the situation, okay, one guy have big lead or two guys are already eliminated. Mm -hmm. And it's, they changed the format many times just because in the past it was a problem. They want to to compete until the end of the qualification. But many times the guys, example, Zidrunas was in big lead, do one stone stop. Yeah. Not good for TV, you know? Yeah. But now with this kind of battle for, for second place, is is better because you have a fight, you know, for mm -hmm. going to qualification. Uh, but it's all the time you have a problem, <laughs> you know, for that to push the athlete to compete until the end for, for, for the TV. Mm -hmm. is, is is the biggest problem and i know it's why the rules change a lot of time because in past it was a problem you have a lot of leader and the guys at the end don't want to take a risk and stop yeah and the tv don't like that you know it, it's it's different in but if you ask me you want to choose the best guy no group 20 guys 10 12 15 events doesn't matter everybody together let's go yeah okay well that's the that's basically of that your... is no doubt the strongest guy on earth well that's basically what your fortissimus will be yeah 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 in all the years that you've competed who's the guy that you thought probably should have done better someone that you thought that guy was so good i can't believe he didn't win world strongest man or the arnold is there anyone that you've seen like that that yes i will say Christoph, because I compete with Christoph many times, I train with him, is one of the strongest guy I ever seen in my life. Huge presser, yeah. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, I compete in many Champions League, you know, Christoph was all the time in podium, all the time leader, all the time the guy to beat, you know, but Injury was not fair with him, you know. Mm. He got so many injuries in big show. 
Yeah. Most youngest man, so many surgery, you know, because I, okay, now I am injured, but I consider myself like a lucky guy because I never get big, big injury in my career. Mm -hmm. And I compete over 200 contests, you know. Yeah. But uh, I think if Christoph stay healthy, you know, it was maybe better luck with injury, at least he can win the Arnold one time. Yeah. I think Arnold is more suit with for him because it's bigger weight. Yeah. Because you know, in that time, War Strongest Man was almost too light for him, mm -hmm. for pressing, you know. And Christophe wasn't the, the biggest guy, like 145, 150 kilo maximum, but 210 log, you know. And uh, I really think he can win more major title if he he was less injured, but he was really not lucky with uh, yeah. injury. Yeah. And when people talk about other Canadian strongmen, I know people always talk about Hugo Girard, but when I think of other Canadian strongmen, I think of Tom McGee and Dominic Filiou, because those were the guys that, as you have, were on the podium at World Strongest Man. Yeah. Um, do you have any type of relationship or ever trained with, with those guys or not? Uh, I trained with Hugo in the past. Uh, Dominique Filiou, not really, because he was living in Gatineau. Uh, I met Tom McGee one time. Tom McGee lives in Los Angeles now, and I meet him in World Strongest Man 2012. Mm -hmm. He was there for watching the competition, and Sven Carlson meet us uh, to, to, together. Yeah. I was a big fan of Tom McGee. You know, it was a crazy guy, good character of World Strongest Man, you know, but back uh, 40 years ago, you know. <laughs> And uh, he was happy to see me make the final in 2012, uh, I, I remember. I don't train a lot with uh, Dominic, but I trained with Hugo many years. Yeah. I was uh, in his uh, like uh, strongman gym mm -hmm. when we, we, I started to train and I moved to, to, to Quebec. But Hugo have also, uh, okay, a quite long career, but also stopped for injury, same of mine. He yeah. broke one uh, quad tendons and both Achilles. Then after that, you know, it's not possible to to compete uh, to compete anymore. Yeah, and the kind of legend of strongman worldwide, perhaps, is Louis Cyr. Um, yeah. Is he someone that you've read about? You're interested in watching some of his well, strength? Yeah, yes, a lot. I read a lot of book about uh, Louis Cyr. We have also a movie made on his life here in uh, in Quebec. You know, for the French Canadian, Louis Cyr was our first hero. You yeah. know, it was the first one made French Canadian breed like at the world level. It's why strongman is in Quebec history a lot. And in each generation after Louis Cyr, you have new athletes. You know, pointing to the top of the world. You know, uh, Victor de la Mar. You have the uh, Bayergeon brother. You know, and but in that time it was more demonstration and stuff. But after that, you have Tom McGee from Canada, Hugo Gerard, Dominic Filiou, Jason Paulin. Many guys make their history, and it's why it's very popular in, in Quebec because in each generation, one guy was on top in the, you know in that top five top 10 world yeah. athletes then uh, when you have a top athlete all the time and you're watching strongman on tv you know you stay in your mind all the time and never forget yeah it inspires the next generation yeah yes of course yeah. yeah and going all the way back you grew up speaking french at school and things and in, in your family yeah, yeah, in Quebec here, everybody speaks in French, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I was in school, we learned English a little bit, but mm -hmm. I learned my English doing strongman, you know. And uh, in, in Quebec City, example, everybody is speaking French a lot. But example for you, you speak English, you, you, you can stay in Montreal and you can work in English in Montreal. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's more simple, it's a bigger city and stuff but no chance to do that in quebec <laughs> no no chance is the is the difference between the the the, the two city M martins understand that this year a lot of people don't speak english in quebec yeah i know a lot of fans don't realize that 
English isn't like your first language or equal first language with French. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, now, example, my daughter is 17. They learn a lot of English now in school, you know. Mm -hmm. But in my time, you know, my teacher doesn't speak English also. Then we we learn some words, you know, animals, colors, some verbs, and that's it. <laughs> You know, you, you ne we never talk in English, you know, because the, the at least the teacher don't speak yeah. in English. But now everybody speak better English. Like the young people, everybody speak good English uh, in Quebec. But if you see for older people, like my parents, they speak just French, you know. Yeah. yeah. And was there a history of strength in your family? Did you have someone that was particularly strong? Yeah, my grandfather on my mother's side. Uh, I have same genetic than him. It was big guy, 6'5", 200 pounds, big, big bones, you know, big hands, bigger than mine. And uh, it was a farmer also, like, uh, like my father and my grandfather. Then uh, I have a good genetic to start strongman. Uh, when I start 2004, you know, I compete first time in strongman uh, without training. I've not trained before and I start training after and starting to to do better because I did well in my first competition. I beat all, almost all the guy from my city. And uh, I start to train from that. And I have good result quite fast. And uh, I was think I think the sport was suit for me. <laughs> then uh, the most important is I really loved the, the first time I did strongman, you know. You know, the, this feeling to push yourself over the limits it's is very good. And the, the adrenaline of the competition is something I like a lot. Uh, it's why I continue and continue to, to compete until uh, last weekend. Yeah. And how do you feel about powerlifting? Because you did a lot of that as well. Did you enjoy it or you just... Yeah, yes, I like powerlifting too. But in that time when I did powerlifting, it was equipped. Yeah. You know, bench shirt, suit and stuff. Because raw wasn't exist, you know, in, in, in that time. But it is a different challenge. You know, I was more nervous for a powerlifting meet than a strong bend meet. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, powerlifting is just about maximum power. Okay. Then you have to choose the good weight to, to do the best with them. And you never know, okay, it will be a good day or a normal day or a bad day. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know someday 800 is easy, someday 800 is not possible, example. But in strongman, it's different. You know, you can run faster that day a little bit, do better on, on that event. Okay, maybe my deadlift is not at its best today, mm -hmm. but I will go faster on stones. Or, yeah. You know, you can give another performance and finally you will win at the end of the day yeah but in powerlifting is a different challenge and i was all the time more nervous but i like this uh this challenge you know to to lift the bigger weight on that day i yeah. really like yeah. can you remember how much you could deadlift like in your very early days of yes first time i do deadlift i do six plate 585 pounds the first time I tried to lift a, a, a bar and the guy was really impressed. It was maybe horrible for, for, for technical view, mm. but I lift six plates. The, the, that's, the like, that's like 265 kilograms, something like that around yeah, there. Yeah. 265, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot at the start. Okay. Yeah. No belt, just no, no strap. You know, in that time it doesn't exist. You just grab the bar and lift okay. with the yeah. back. <laughs> So that's real, real raw strength. Yeah. What were you doing work-wise then? Were you working on the farm too? At the farm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's a good, it's a good kind of work to to learn to lift heavy stuff. You know. Yeah. Perfect. So I work in the wood a lot also with my father because we have machine in the wood. We have a lot of forest at home then you know since i was really young i start to lift weights and try to be stronger you know mm -hmm. so, uh, working in the farms was all all the time it was a big challenge with my friends when my friends came to work at the farm okay who will will who will lift the biggest stone today or uh, it's all all time it was competition then you know strongman sport uh, is almost same situation then i, I like that mm -hmm. <laughs> And what are your hobbies, JF, outside of strongman? What do you do to relax? 
uh, to relax. But in winter time, I do snowmobile. Mm -hmm. Me and my uh, my wife have uh, each. Uh, we have uh, everybody uh, our own snowmobile. Then we ride a lot uh, here in the trail uh, in Quebec. Also, uh, we like uh, in summer to take a like a convertible ride in car and just chill, you know, around. But I have a farm at home, you know, where I have big field, six acres here. I have nice setup, you know, with pool. And we are in the forest here, very quiet place. Then we, we stay at home and enjoy uh, with animals. We have also horse at home, little cow, you know. <laughs> then uh, we have many jobs to do here. But the problem now, I can do nothing. <laughs> I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in a few weeks, I will be able to, to go back to work again. Mm -hmm. And about your training, about coaches, about nutritionists, what do you have? Uh, I do, for me, I do all by myself, okay. but I do online coaching with young athletes mm -hmm. who want to compete in, in, in strongman or powerlifting. And for the nutrition, you know, I, I take many advice from other athletes. You know, Brian helped me over the years. Uh, also, Martins. You know, Martins helped me a lot this year with rehabilitation. And he gave me many exercises to help me with my shoulder, mm -hmm. my legs, my hips. And he helped me a lot, uh, really. Uh, Martins is very good, very good for that. And we all time talking, you know, when we compete in, in the show with the other athletes, you know, and I take some tricks from one, I give some tricks to another one, you know, it's why I, I like strongman. Everybody is like friends and we try to, every, we want to, to make everybody stronger and better. Yeah. And uh, I, I like that. I really like that. And uh, I think the, the best coach for me and the best helper for me is the other athlete push me when I train. <laughs> yeah. And about your diet, do you count calories? Or you yeah. Just, you want, you yeah before I learned, I eat like seven, uh, 7,500, close to 8,000. But it was very hard to eat 8,000 this year. I was a little bit lighter in Arnold Classic than the last Arnold in 2020. But uh, maybe it's my age. You know, it's maybe harder to, to eat a little bit. But uh, normally I was close to 8,000 calories a day, six or seven meals. You know, normally uh, I was the thing. But now it's like three, three meals only. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um... I think, you know, I always ask athletes about psychology, about what goes on in your mind. So for you, when you were at the Arnold's a couple of weeks ago and you were getting ready to do a max squat, what's going on in J.F. Caron's head? Oh, in my head? Well, mm -hmm. not, I, I will know. I, I was sure it will be easy for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, this even not stress me. You know, it was, you know, I wait max squat from years, you know. Uh, I was very happy to see that happening. Then I was not nervous. I know I will beat everyone easy, you know. So you, are you always confident people. when you go to do big lifts in World's Strongest Man, the Arnold? You always just feel super confident? Yeah. Yeah. And this year, the squat was. Maybe the I was the more confident. Maybe the I was sure 100% I will win that event. It may be the first time of my career it happened. You know, but uh, I was sure for, for that one, I have no doubt. I was no doubt because I saw also the other guys training and I knew I was much stronger than, than them on that event. And I was no doubt. I, I concentrate myself more on the other events to yeah. try to lose less points on the, the, the pressing yeah. events. And I train a lot my frame because a frame is good event for me. And I was prepared, but I was not surprised. I said to Maxim, you're supposed to want that event because with big weight, normally it's better than me. Yeah. Then when I see him win the frame, I was really happy for, for, for him. And uh, Stone's also good then. I practice a lot here in my, uh, in my gym. Mm -hmm. I was good prepared, but the squad was not there. Mm -hmm. I was really not nervous. I was just happy to do it finally. You know, after almost 20 years of competition, 
first time happening. Yeah, to see. I was just happy. But uh, I was no doubt. You know, many guys ask me, oh, oh we, you will live. I will live what I need. <laughs> is, is that how you are in all events? Say you've got to do at the Stones. Are you still super confident or you get angry or you always just stay confident? You know, I no, I still confident. Anyway, Atlas Stone is good, uh, good event for me. Mm. I did one mistake in Atlas Stone in my life. It last year, short classic. Yeah, but yeah. it's never happened a lot of time. You know. Yeah. In, in the many times, I improve a lot my ranking on Atlas Stone at the last event. Last year it happened a mistake. I slip on the second stone, but okay. Yeah. Your, your career has been hugely successful and hugely consistent. But if you could give yourself, when you were young, any advice now, something that you perhaps would change, what would it be? Something you would have done differently? It be, you know? uh, yes, I would change a lot of things. But the, the main thing is doing more strongman events. Because in the past, when I start, we trained too much in the gym not enough events it, it's why uh, we are not at that level we are today in my opinion but it was like that you know you, you we learn during uh, over the years and we we try to specialize uh, ourselves on that but the the best thing i i can say to the new athlete do more events you know it's not just about squatting deadlifting or pressing you know you have to be agile you must to to practice this even more and more and more and it's why you will came much better and uh, is i think is the best advice i can do can see yeah so yeah okay and your best year i would suggest was 2020 yeah you came fourth at the arnold's and then you podiumed at world's strongest man was for you that your best year of your career i think i was stronger last year last year i made top five in each contest mm -hmm. i did but i was injured in world's strongest man but still i finished fifth but i was much stronger in 2021 than 2020 but 2020, okay, I get on podium and I'm very proud of that. But I was much stronger in last year, World's Strongest Man, I think. But still, you know, I think I was stronger in all of last week. <laughs> I continue to improve again. It's why, you know, I have this feeling in my mind. I don't want to finish career right now. You know, if it's possible to do something and come back, uh, something, you know, is left in the tank. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that, that was really going to be my kind of final question to you. How do you now see your future? So you do still have ambitions to come back and oh, go yes. out on your own terms, yeah? Yes. Yes, of course. Because uh, I know uh, I was maybe in my best shape. Then it's why, you know, when you stop and you want to slowing down, okay, it's maybe easier. But now I, I was a little bit up again. Yeah. And it's stopped by injury. But of course, if it's possible to come back one more time, you know, I, I will like to come back for win Canada's strongest man another time. Last year, I'm not competing because I have to organize the show. You know, it was a lot of job. It was much, much harder than won the contest. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I walk like hell during like uh, four, four days. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not just for winning the competition. I will maybe come back just for compete one more time with some friends. You know, it's it's more for that than the the the, the, re, the final result. Yeah. It will be just fun, but uh, of course, I think I have ambition to to come back. Uh, but it will be long. You know, the 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 doctor said no more than one year to recover from that. You know the biggest because many guys wrote me and say, "Oh, don't worry, Zidronas broke also both tendons." Yes, but Zidronas was twenty-two years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah and I'm thirty-nine, and uh, the surgeon said, "You know, you have a lot of cal calcification in your your knee tendons. You know, after twenty years of training, then it will be take more time. It it will be more fragile also after then." 
don't try to go too fast because the, the risk to broken again is very high. That's what it's Okay, well, look, I think the best thing I've got out of this interview is that you're in a positive mood and that you um, still have plans to come back. You still have ambition, which I think is what everybody hoped we would hear from you. Because when we saw this accident live at the Arnold's, my heart sank. I think everybody's did. Um, so to see you now, obviously, already making plans for the future is just great news for all of us. And I'm really chuffed to see it. Yeah. And uh, I want maybe take also one minute just to say thank you to all the fans and everybody. You know, I, I, I wasn't... I uh, wasn't sure then that uh, I received thousands and thousands of messages, you know, it's, it's crazy, you know. I know I'm popular, but not like that. <laughs> you understand what I said? <laughs> yeah. And I receive many, many uh, messages of uh, encouragement and stuff like that. And I know the people li like me and want to see me compete one more time anymore. And uh, I will try. I will do my homework. I will do all is possible in my recovery to to came back from that injury. And if it's possible to to compete again, I will do just for the fans. Yeah. But you you earned that love and respect from the fans, JF. You earned it. And you deserve it. So we're all behind you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch up again soon. Yes, I hope. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm.